Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing transformation. So let's start with translations. Remember, this is just a slide. And with translations for the rules, you add or subtract. If you are going left three, you're gonna subtract three from the X value. If you're going right three, you're gonna add three to the X value. And then up and down affect the Y coordinate. If you go down three, you're gonna subtract three from Y. If you go up three, you're gonna add three to Y. So let's take a look at this translation here. I can tell it's a translation because I just slid over. The orientation of my figure did not change at all. The size did not change at all. Here's my original one, here's my new one. We just slid over so it is a translation. And I'm gonna count from A to a prime how much I slid over. Looks like I slid over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the first part is wanting us to identify um, just a description of the transformation. It is a translation left eight. And I did not go up or down at all. I just went left eight. Next thing is wanting us to identify the rule. So if you can't remember the rule, look at the coordinates and that's going to help you in figuring out the rule. So I'm gonna list out the coordinate for A. It was at two, six. And then A prime is at negative six, six. So my Y value did not change at all, but my A value went down and it went down eight, or sorry, my X value went down. And my X value went down eight since I moved left eight. So that rule would be X minus eight comma Y. Okay, now let's answer some questions about this transformation. Did it preserve congruent C? Did the angle measures preserve congruency? Yes, they did. Our angle measures did not change size at all. Did the side lengths preserve congruency? Yes, they did. The side lengths didn't change size at all either. And then the next two questions are asking about the orientation, the orientation of the vertices and the figure. Did the orientation of the vertices change or the figure change? No, they didn't. We didn't turn our figure whatsoever. We just slid it over. Okay, go ahead and take a look at these next two transformations. They look the exact same, but the difference is with the vertices. So this first one is a reflection, which is just a flip. You can tell that I just flipped over the y-axis there based on where my vertices are. So remember the rules for reflection over the x-axis means the x value stays the same and the y value changes. And then for a reflection over the y-axis, the x value changes and the y value stays the same. So this one, like we talked about, it's a reflection over the y-axis. Reflection over the y-axis axis. And if you can't remember the rule for that, then look at the coordinates. A is at the same spot it was in the last one, which was 2, 6. And then A prime, there's the original, there's the new. A prime was at negative 2, 6. So you can see it's just the x value that changed signs. So the rule would be opposite x, y. Did the angle measures preserve congruency? Yes, they did. We didn't change sizes. Did the side lengths preserve congruency? Yes, they did. We did not change sizes. Did the orientation of the vertices change? So let's go around the triangle clockwise. So A, C, B, when I go clockwise, is the order of my vertices in the original figure. In the new figure, when I go clockwise, I go A, B, C. So did the orientation of the vertices change? Yes, and then obviously the orientation of the figure change, I can see that it flipped. So this one is a yes as well. Okay, then this one, like we talked about, it looks really similar, but I can tell it's a rotation because if you look at the vertices, it looks like we just rotated one quadrant counterclockwise. So here are the rules for 
rotations, they're a little bit tricky to remember. 90 degrees clockwise is the same as 270 counterclockwise, which is Y opposite X. 180 clockwise and counterclockwise is opposite X opposite Y. And then 270 clockwise or 90 degrees counterclockwise is opposite Y X. So here was my original figure. Here was my new figure. I went one quadrant to the left, so you could say that is 90 degrees counterclockwise. It's a rotation. 90 degrees counterclockwise, or that's the same as going through one, two, three quadrants clockwise, so 270 clockwise is the same thing. The rule for it, let's write down A and A prime to see if we can visualize the rule. So A is at 2, 6, and A prime is all the way over here at negative 6, 2. So you can see that we switched the order of the 2 and the 6, and the 6, which is the original Y, we changed the sign of it. So the rule for this transformation would be opposite y, x. Did the angle measures preserve congruency? Yes, we didn't change sizes. Do the side lengths preserve congruency? Yes, we didn't change sizes at all. Did the orientation of the vertices change? So let's look at our vertices in clockwise order. In the original figure, it goes a, c, b in clockwise. And then in the new figure, it also goes a, c, b in clockwise order too. So did the orientation of the vertices change? No, they did not. Let's look at the orientation of the figure though. It's obviously facing a different way. So this one is, yes, we did change. Okay, last transformation is a dilation. This one is different because we actually do change sizes. We get bigger or smaller by the scale factor. And remember, you can find the scale factor by doing new over original. And the rule for your transformation is scale factor times X, scale factor times Y. There's multiplication with a dilation, but no addition or subtraction. And remember, in your new figure, the perimeter changes by the scale factor and the area changes by the scale factor squared. So let's look at this dilation over here. Here's my original figure, here's my new figure, and the first thing I notice is I get smaller, so my scale factor should be less than one. I'm going to use A and A prime again to help me find the scale factor. A was at 2, 6, and A prime was at 1, 3. And now I'm going to do new over original to find the scale factor. Um, and I'm just going to use the X value since those are smaller numbers. So to find the scale factor, I'll do new, which was 1 over 2. So my scale factor is 1 half. So a verbal description of this transformation would be a dilation by a scale factor of one half. So that means my rule for this transformation is one half x comma one half y. Okay, then this next question said, did the angle measures preserve congruency? Remember, dilations produce congruent figures. So this is, or sorry, not congruent, dilations produce similar figures, and similar figures have congruent angles. So yes, my angle measures did not change. Obviously, my side lengths changed, though. So do the side lengths preserve congruency would be a no. And then this next question said, do the orientation of the vertices change and the figure? Those are both no, because we didn't turn it all. We just made it smaller. And then the last question is, how did the perimeter and area change? So remember, the perimeter changes by the scale factor and the area changes by the scale factor squared. So the perimeter just got one half times smaller since the scale factor was one half. And the area would change by one half squared. So in the calculator, I'm gonna do alpha y equals one half, and I'm going to square it. 
and I get 0.25 or 1 fourth, so the area would get 1 fourth times smaller.